Hi, my name is Lila, and I want to introduce you to our Indonesian superheroine Sri Asih. Sri Asih is the first superheroine in comic by Kosasih. I will show you now five reprints of the cover of the comic Sri Asih. These reprints are the only reprints that can still be bought or obtained nowadays, and in my paper, I will analyze them. There are approximately 11 titles of Sri Asih between 1954 and 1955 and was printed and published by Melody in Bandung. Then in 1961 to 1962, four other titles was printed in Jakarta. Here we saw also the creator of Sri Asih, the R.A. Kosasih, the national comic artist. As you can see from the picture, Sri Asih wears a traditional, a traditional costume which can be found in Wayang or Shadows performance. She wears a batik skirt and a bustier. Her headdress is exactly the same as in Wayang performance. She is shown here in action and you can see also the details. She can fly also with ease in her traditional costume. Sri Asih could be everywhere, especially in the big cities where the crime rate are high and the mafia are lurking. She is also very smart and good-hearted. In the comics, we never see Sri Asih kill the, vi the villain. She merely left them unconscious for the police. She is also very strong and can grow herself to a giant or multiply herself. Melody was a publisher and in that time has already print and sell comic, but to increase their sellings, Melody wanted to commission a superhero. And as we, we know, Melody wanted a distinctive Indonesian superhero. Kosasi was recruited and Kosasi has created not one but two superheroines, Sri Asih and Siti Gahara. The latter was not so popular as Sri Asih because Siti Gahara plays in Jenny world and considered by some religious group as blasphemy. So Siti Gahara was stopped. When Kosasih was asked by Melody Publisher to make an Indonesian style comic, namely the Wayang or Sedio performance, which is a very well-known performance using Javanese language. So by being a Sundanese, Kosasih decided to use Bahasa Indonesia in his Wayang. The title Bapak Comic Indonesia or National Comic Artist is in my opinion justified. His comic Mahabharata and Ramayana have been read outside the Javanese culture and all over Indonesia. The Indonesian comic has experienced the golden era in the 60s through the 80s. Emerged in this area, in this era, comic artists, the so-called Big Five, like Ganestio, Jan Mintaraga, Saldi, Hans Jeladara, and many more. Their style it was inherited by the next generation of comic artists, such as Hasmi, the creator of Gundala, Wit and S, the creator of Godam, Jair, Mansur Daman, and many more. Even though Sri Asih was also short-lived, but she had a broader fans and was responsible to reviving the interest on, on Indonesian superhero. The role of publisher Melody is evident in making Indonesian superhero comic very popular. The circulation of Sri Asih was first 2000, then it was increased more than 20,000. The popularity of this comic has also resulted in transmedia to film and was done by the director in 1954, Turino Junaidi and Tan Singhwat in the film called Sri Asih. And we will also see the remake of this movie next year from Bumi Langit Corporation. Sri Asih has a broad reader and gained the popularity in the time of Jaman Maju or progress. As we can see in the comic, 
transportation like train, ship, and airplane, airplane, and also major cities in the world like Singapore, Macau, London, New York, and also the new technology, the so-called the Seribu Mata or Thousand Eyes, the metaphor for computer. In the middle of this modern paraphernalia, Sri Asi stands out with her wayang dress. This is the time to express the national, the national identity in the international world. Melody as publisher understands the popularity of Sri Asi, and that's why published the second comic magazine with wider theme to satisfy the demands of the readers. The success of Melody has initiated others to follow the footsteps of Melody. Maranatha Bookstore, also in Bandung, has published children's books and comics, but also published other comics and specializing in wayang comic. To this day, Maranatha still print and sell wayang comic. In that time, the comic artists sell their works to the publisher without copyright. That's why they did not have any original work anymore with them. They have to surrender their artwork to the publisher. The, copy, the copyright mostly handed over to the publisher. The publisher have the right to commission the comic. Only the already famous comic artists, for example, Ganestio, freely decides what to make. The fame and glory of Sri Asi did not last long. There were some scholars who were not happy with the growth of comics and also the popular culture. The anti-comic sentiments has condemned comic books to be of lower value that can ruin the younger generation. Friedrich Werdem has written the book about the bad effect that comic and popular culture have done especially by superhero comics. His opinion was backed up in Indonesia by some academics and resulted in pressure to Sri Asih. Melody has to stop publishing Sri Asih and to stay in the production because Asih was commissioned to make a real Indonesian comic. So emerged the Wayang comics. But comics still read by broader audience. More and more Taman Bacaan or private run public library were in many cities and the price of the comic inexpensive in that time and can be bought by anybody. It is said that the first Indonesian superhero Sri Asih emulate Wonder Woman, but in my opinion she was never made to be a superheroine with sex appeal like Wonder Woman or even Sina from the younger generation. She is an Indonesian petite woman, but with a superpower. She is a woman advocate and defender of the needy. Sri Asih was a representation of an Indonesian modern woman aware of her role in the society. As Nani, her alter ego, she has to conceal her true character by being a modern but simple woman. Like any other superhero, she was not supposed to reveal her true mission. Sri Asih siding with women in rejecting objectification of women at that time was common because the feminist movement in Indonesia has started long before. There were even women mass organization since the first women congress in 1928. Feminist ideas advocated by various women's mass organization in that time might have also penetrated the process of Kosasi work so that heroism was no longer just by a man but also a woman. Thank you very much for your attention.